Okay, 3x plus... Okay. 3x plus 1 is, like, so sick. Okay, it gets me super amped up. But for some reason, no one ever wants to talk about it with me. Probably because they think it's boring. But honestly, it's, like, the coolest thing I've seen since, like, Calculus. Which is... I mean, that's... Calculus is sick. Let's be honest. Okay, boring stuff out of the way first. And oh my god, it is yeah, it's wacky and all over the pattern place. Pattern involved, like nothing's like happening. It. So basically, you just take any positive integer and you multiply it by three, and then you add one, and then you divide by two until it's odd again. And it's like, uh, oh my god, it's boring. So Colatz came up with this, and he was like, okay, all of these integers keep ending up at one. That's kind of crazy. I think maybe all of them. All the way up until infinity. Any greater integer greater than zero is gonna end up at once. And like, that's cool, but these like, honestly, like these sequences are all over the place. I wrote a script to like, look at them and here's like a couple numbers and like everything seems kind of normal, but like there's basically no pattern at all. And then they all just end up at one, but then you try 27 and it's like, it takes 40 steps and you're just like, what? So basically I use the script and I generate like a whole, whole bunch of numbers, right? I generated up to 20,000. So if you look at uh, the recursion up to 100 for just the odd integers, like honestly, it, it doesn't really look like anything's going on. Maybe you see something. I honestly personally do not see anything. But if you do it all the way up to 20,000, then you start to see like these weird crazy bands forming and there's like this weird curvature to everything. So then you like do a log plot of that same plot up to 20,000 of the odd integers and the recursion numbers and like, it looks, there's like a pattern there. Okay, and this is where things start to get fun. But first you need like this set of numbers. So it's like 0, 1, uh, 5, 21, 85, 341. Basically it's just the sum of the even powers of two. So like one plus four, one plus four plus 16. But like these set of numbers, uh, uh, this set is so important because you can, you can take any odd integer. So for example, three, right? And, and you have the number zero, one, five, and right there three is between one and five, you can, you can cut it off there. And you can, you can do this calculation where you do three minus one, so three minus the lower one, and then divide it by five minus one, so the upper one minus the lower one, and you get this fraction one over two, which just seems unimportant until you try it on another number like 13. 13 minus five is the top, right? 13 minus the lower number, but then the number above that is 21 from that set. So you do 21 minus five on the bottom, and then you get one half for that fraction as well, right? That's crazy. And the reason that's crazy is that because both of those numbers, three and 13, gave that fraction one half, that means that they take the same number of recursive steps to get to one, right? And you might be thinking, well, that's probably just a weird coincidence. No, it works every time for all odd integers. It always works. You take, you take the lower number from that set, two to the two K minus one quantity divided by three, right? And you take the number above it and you figure out where that number lies in between them. And if it comes out to the same value of V for both of them, it takes the same number of recursive steps. Okay, so like I call up V and it has this equation, which looks scary, but it just means you take the number minus the lower one, and then you divide that part by the higher one minus the lower one, and that's it, and it gives you a fraction. And what's crazy is you can take that fraction fee and you can convert it into a different fee, which will also take the same number of recursive steps to get back to one. So I have one over two. All I need to do is multiply the one by 64 and add seven. That's my new numerator. And then I multiply the bottom part, the two, by 64 also, and that's the new denominator. And that gives me 71 divided by 128. And that is a new fee, which corresponds to a new set of odd integers that have the same number of recursive steps to get back down to one as the original fee. One half. Oh my god, that gets boring so fast, but it's really awesome because look what you can do with it then. You can translate all of the odd integer values into their corresponding fee values and then like honestly, like look how awesome it looks. Like it looks so sick.
of you are curious about why this works, you can pause on these two images. It's just a breakdown of when phi is equal to 3 over 16. Okay, so like, that's awesome. That's great. That tells us basically nothing about the structure of what's actually going on here. In order to understand the structure of like what's actually going on, I'm going to need to zoom in to one of the individual bands. But before I zoom in, I need to show you these two equations. These are the equations for sigma. It's actually the same equation, but I broke it up into two equations depending on whether or not r is an even or an odd integer. I just did this to avoid half index values. So when I say that I'm zooming in to a single band, basically what that means is I'm picking a single value for r, I'm plugging that in, and then I'm looking at all of the phi values between successive integer values of n. So for the example that we're about to zoom in and look at, I'm gonna plug in r equals one, and then I'm gonna use the endpoints where n is equal to one and n is equal to two. That value where n is equal to one, I'm gonna to refer to as sigma minus, and that value where n is equal to two, I'm gonna to refer to as sigma plus. Okay, so now that we're zoomed in, I need to introduce you to psi. Basically within a band, you can group together values of phi, and those values, when you group them together, obey an equation that in the infinite limit approaches a value psi naught. Then you can group together values of psi naught and they follow an equation that in the infinite limit, and you can probably see where this is going. You can continue to make these groupings within a band until ultimately the final psi value is actually equal to sigma plus. So back to the band that we zoomed in on. This is the simplest example because right at the first infinite limit at psi naught, you are already converged onto sigma plus. The method for generating these families of values that are related is kind of involved and kind of boring and involves backtracking. So... With the exceptions of some weird examples uh, surrounding psi one, everything is relatively well behaved. But that stuff's kind of boring. Now I need to introduce you to the coolest part of the entire system. This is kappa. It is just like V, but now instead of interpolating between the set from before, we're interpolating between sigma minus and sigma plus. Before I explain, this is what it looks like when you translate from phi space to kappa space on the domain zero to one in both spaces. Here I use different colors to distinguish points from neighboring bands. To be honest, the first time I saw this structure, I was kind of blown away. Looking at it both does and does not make any sense to me. But what's going on here is every kappa at a given recursion value, such as three, for example, is related to a kappa value from the previous recursion value, which would in that case would be two. And they're all related through this equation. So the same way that you can group together phi values, you can actually do the same thing with kappa values and they will converge in the infinite limit onto a kappa value associated to a recursion that's one less than the recursion associated with the set of kappa values that you're looking at currently. So in other words, kappa values populate this huge family tree that all traces back to the original kappa value of one. But there is another cool property for kappa values. This is what it looks like when I translate the kappa value of phi to the kappa value of psi naught. You're actually looking at the same values of kappa before and after the translation. They've just been moved up by a single unit of r. So in other words, if I look at the kappa for some phi at r is equal to two, I can find that same exact kappa for some psi one at r is equal to four. So every time I collapse down psi n to some psi n plus one and keep doing so until I've collapsed down onto a kappa of one, it is the same family of kappa values that I would be increasing through regardless of the value of r for the path that you're looking at. But the important thing here is that kappa tends to increase monotonically until it finally converges onto one. So all that said, this is the part where I explain why the conjecture is probably true. And it has to do with this important limit being equal to zero. The fact that the difference between sigma plus and sigma minus goes to zero as r goes to infinity regardless of the values of n tells me that for finite values of recursion, as they are approaching infinity, those bands that they exist within are getting infinitely dense. This tells me that there's probably not a value of phi corresponding to an odd integer that would be missed or that would slip through the cracks. Uh, in addition to that, the difference between any psi naught and phi for any value of phi has this equation, which means that the difference is actually finite and non-zero for any integer. But at the end of the day, the truth is that infinity is weird and is very capable of breaking things. So who's to say the system doesn't break down on its way there? All in all, I had a lot of fun playing around with this problem in my spare time, uh, and there's 
just so many other fun things and fun properties that I learned along the way, but I wanted this to kind of be short and sweet. So thank you for watching. You woke me up this morning in my bed. A little woodpecker was pecking at my head. I'm sorry, I got bad timing. The cat goes down the skull and out the window she goes. Short supply these days, so don't mess this up for you and me. Cause even though it hurts to say, just give it time. In time, it'll line up for once. Is it lightning strikes while God is laughing? Why'd he make it look so short? Is it a curse or a blessing? I know we're not that close, right? Oh, but who's counting? A crack goes blue, the strange light. One, two, three, four. I never get much sleep. She always wakes me So half my life is staring off at the pieces of my dreams I'm sorry I got bad timing The crack goes down the skull And out the window she goes Short supply these days So don't Fuck this up For you and me Cause Even though this hurts to say Just give it time In time It'll line up for once While friends are in Short supply these days so down straight too close to that talent cause And even though it hurts to say and just give it up in time we'll be moving on. I'll just give it up. Time will be moving on